Good morning all, this is Jennifer Morris. I haven't seen you in a really long time. Uh, today is November 22nd, 2017. I think I haven't recorded anything um, for my YouTube channel since January of 2017. So I keep getting subscribers and I keep getting these notifications on my phone that new people are subscribing and um, the Lord has been convicting me. You've been learning things and you're not sharing. So, um, I was talking to a friend after class last night. I've been going to this wonderful class called Family Life Skills International. You should look it up. Try to get in that class. It's fantastic. And I was telling her how God has offered me an opportunity to share what he's been showing me. And I've been like hogging it and hoarding it. So this morning he gave me just such a blessing. I was listening to the radio and uh, Pastor Erwin Lutzer from the Moody Church came on. And I don't agree with everything that he teaches, but he teaches so many wonderful things that I do agree with, and this was certainly one of them, on how our contentment comes through generosity and a proper mm -hmm. understanding of who we are and um, what is actually ours and what is not ours. And I really want to share this with you. It seems timely. Um, tomorrow is Thanksgiving in America. And um, being generous is um, uh, the beginning, I believe, of the holiday season in our country. Uh, the holiday season in America uh, should be a season of generosity. Um, I think a lot of people see it as a se season of, yay, I get something. And uh, what we should get more than anything is to, to give. You know, uh, we know that the Bible tells us that it's more uh, blessed to give than to receive. So let me share um, what I got from Pastor Lutzer's uh, teaching this morning on generosity and contentment. He said that uh, contentment is learned. I thought contentment is learned and Paul said it in Philippians 4.11, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Paul had to learn contentment. You know, he wrote that letter to the Philippians while he was in prison. So he had learned in whatever state I am to be content. And that's a lesson for us, that contentment is learned. Uh, number two, you are a steward, not an owner of everything that you have, because all that you have actually belongs to God. Nothing belongs to us except Jesus, if he's yours, and he's yours to keep. But everything else is on loan to you. Uh, Psalm 24, 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Number three, in order for contentment to come into your life, Pastor Lutzer said there has to be a change in ownership and then it will change your perspective. He said deliberately take about a half an hour and give God all your things out loud and transfer ownership, so to speak, from yours to his, since he is the actual owner and you are only the recipient recipient of his generous loan to you. So if you think about it, your blood, your breath, your skin, your teeth, your eyes, your vision, the ability to hear, um, the ability to move. Uh, I had a sister who suffered from multiple sclerosis for years and she was a very athletic person before that and then for uh, 16 years I believe she was withering her body. She was trapped in this withered body in the bed that couldn't do all the things that God has allowed me to do. I love to go for a walk in the morning and every step I take is a blessing because I know when my sister who mercifully went to be with the Lord several years ago, she would have loved to take all the steps that I'm taking and she probably would have ran. I don't run, but she probably would have. So those things I don't want to take for granted because there are people that I know that would love to be able to run and go and do as God has availed me physically still to be able to do and they can't. And so I thank God for those things, but also your people, your pets, your car, your uh, home, uh, all the groceries. I've made it a habit now when I purchase my groceries to ask God to help me not uh, waste any of his money before I go in. And then when I come out and I put them in the trunk, I sit in my car and I say, Lord, I bless all the food that, and drink that's in this car. And I pray that it would be a blessing to your people. You would use it to nourish us and strengthen us. And I thank you for it right now. And I've learned to thank God for the groceries that I just purchased with his money. And so um, it's caused me to have more of a generous outlook and want to be generous with people. 
So think about that, that your breath, your blood, your vision, skin, eyes, hair, teeth, tongue, mind, body, spirit, home, car, people, all the people you have in your life are alone from God. You don't get to keep anything but Jesus in your heart. When you leave, you have to leave your body here. Your spirit is going to heaven if you know Jesus as your savior. And you take the spirit of God with you when you go. The Holy Spirit is a gift that he gives to us when we receive him as our savior. And, um, and, and Jesus told us he's a gift forever. We, we, we keep him forever. So uh, get a proper perspective. If you need help biblically in understanding who you are to God uh, and why you are, read Psalm 139. I thought about it, reading it on this uh, video, but you read it. You go to Psalm 139 and you read it and read it in different versions. My personal favorite so far is Psalm 139 in the New King James Version. Um, but you read it in different versions and glean what God has for you in it. Specifically in verse 16, he says that all of your days have been written down in his book before there ever was the first one. So there's a measure of comfort knowing that God knows every decision you're going to make. He knows every bad thing about us, every good thing about us. He knows every single thing that's going to happen to us in our entire life. And it's already written down in his book. So when I tend to lean more towards being anxious about something, I remember that verse, Psalm 139, 16, and I go, okay, well, you know, however this is going to work out, God already knows, and I really don't need to worry about it. He tells me not to worry anyways, but hello, I worry. I try not to, but I do it. <laughs> um, and I know I'm not alone there. I have lots of sisters who confess to me that they, they do worry. Uh <clears throat> Also, a discipline, he said, uh, Pastor Lutzer said, a discipline of generosity can only happen when we give ourselves away. We have to therefore believe in our heart that all of it is his. And that's what happens when you do that deliberate transfer. You have that out loud half hour or whatever conversation saying, Lord, thank you. I give this to you. I give this to you. If you have it in your mind that it's yours, you need to have it in your mind that you are his steward. And um, how should you treat everything, including your body? Uh, it must be a made up matter in our minds. So take the time to deliberately in audible prayer, thank God for everything that he has loaned to you. Uh, what's going to last? Pastor Lutzer asked what we have or what we do with it. Hmm. And that made me think of, um, he didn't re reference this verse, but it made me think of this very hard verse. First Timothy 5, 6 says, uh, but she, she who lives in indulgence or pleasure is dead while she lives. You know, if you waste your whole life feeding your flesh, feeding your flesh, feeding your flesh, you're going to be absolutely miserable. Uh, selfishness steals our contentment. So remember um, Madame Blueberry from Veggie Tales. She's so blue, 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 blue. She's so blue, she don't know what to do. She's got so much stuff and she constantly wants more stuff. Covetousness makes us want more. <clears throat> Covetousness is a trait in us that's never satisfied. So we have to pray that God will give us satisfaction. Um, watch it again if you haven't watched it. Um, uh, in a long time or watch it for the first time google it uh, veggie tales and that episode is madam blueberry R watch it it's so telling about who we are in the flesh and how our hearts are just uh when we're in in covetousness when we're in that place where we're not content it, we need to veer away and start being generous generosity okay selfishness uh self-absorption steals our contentment they're polar opposites uh, Pastor Luther said the danger of riches is a false attitude of self-sufficiency and a lack of humble dependence on God because God says um, my ways are not your ways. God wants us to be dependent upon him. He wants us to include him in our all day long. He wants us to say, I need a parking space or, um, Lord, I, 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 you know, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, you, I, I recently 
said this to somebody. It was one of those things where you say it out loud from your heart and you're like, whoa, that was really good. And I knew it wasn't from me. It was from the Lord. I, I told Grace, actually my 12 year old, I said, that thing that you're dreading, that thing that you dread, bathe that in prayer. Bathe it in prayer. Ask God to take care of it. Um, and, and he does. And I've been using that uh, understanding of bathe that thing that you dread in prayer. And God's just been showing me, I got this. The thing comes and it, and it goes away and it's almost like a wind that came and went. I'm like, wow, what happened? The Lord took care of it. He blessed it. But I asked him, I, I bathed that thing I dreaded in prayer and he cared for it. Um, so Pastor Lutzer, Lutzer says that um, a lack of, of humble dependence on God is the problem with uh, having a haughty spirit and riches. Uh, in this present age, it may, it, 1 Timothy 6.17 says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. Haughty means snobbish, uh, snobbishly selfish, puffed up, prideful about their riches. Uh, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. They're to trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. God gives us things to enjoy richly and all things. Uh, that's 1 Timothy 6, 17. Read it for yourself. Hebrews 13, 16 reminds us, Do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Um, when I read that verse this morning, I thought about my dear friend uh, who told me just yesterday uh, this, this thing that happened. Uh, she's been in a very impoverished financially uh, situation. Um, trusting God, God's been providing, but there's nothing left over. And um, she's all of a sudden told me that she's developed this spirit of, of grasping um, selfishness, afraid to be generous, where before she used to be very generous with her, even with her little, you know, like the widow who put in her two mites and that Jesus said she was more generous than everyone because she gave everything she had. This friend of mine has that attitude. She, she always gives out of whatever she has, she gives it. And she told me she was on the way home from the grocery store yesterday and she just had to get a few things for tomorrow for Thanksgiving and she was very careful about what she bought because she just has a tiny bit left and she has to wait till Friday to get paid again <clears throat> and she told me that she was grieved because normally she likes to bless somebody when she goes to the grocery store or when she goes out and she hasn't been able to be generous she hasn't had anything to be generous with and she said on the way home from the store she was on a main highway here in Fort Lauderdale and she saw a man sitting on a, a bus bench <clears throat> slumped over and completely passed out with the west sun hitting him he had no shirt on and he was completely drunk and passed out on the bench and he was getting scorched he had on shorts tennis shoes and socks no shirt no hat he was passed out drunk slumped with the West Sun cooking his torso and his face. And she said, she passed him by and said, oh Lord, help him. And she really felt like I, ha I can help him. And she was afraid to help him because she didn't know if he was gonna hurt her, if he woke up, if he was drunk or violent or what. But she said, I went two more lights. I finally did a U-turn. I turned myself around and I parked in the parking lot next to that bus stop. And I pushed all my groceries in my trunk off of this blanket that I had spread out and I took a banana out of my bunch and this blanket and she walked over to him and she said she spread the blanket across his chest and it covered him just in one sweep of it and she put the banana on his lap and she got back in her car and she started to cry and she said I just really prayed that God would bless him she said she never felt closer to Jesus than she did in that very moment in that space of time because that was an act of Jesus. She gave what she could give. What she could give was a banana and a blanket to shelter him from the searing South Florida heat that he was cooking in his drunkenness. So find out ways that you can be generous. Pastor Lutzer said generosity flows from the gift of Jesus in that order. That's what he said. He said, a heart that is filled with Jesus wants to bless others. And that was my friend's heart yesterday. She wants to bless, but financially she couldn't. So she gave what she could, you know, those were her two mites. Jesus' whole ministry, if you think about it, was about blessing others in all kinds of ways. Words of encouragement, healings, the exorcisms. Now we just throw pills at people and tell them they got a, a mental problem. 
Nobody's exercising anybody. And if you do an exorcism, people think you're bonkers. Well, Jesus never talked about mental illness. He did exorcisms. He cast out demons. He fed the hungry. He was correcting incorrect doctrine when he came upon it with the religious leaders. Here's my husband. Hi! <laughs> Offering hope to the hopeless, setting people free to trust God. He blessed us with salvation through the forgiveness of our many, many, many sins. And his resurrection from the grave gives us the promise of eternal life with him in a perfect place where there is no more trouble or sorrow, or sin, or the ability to sin, or even death. That's where you're headed when Jesus is your savior. And if you reject Jesus, you get the opposite. You go to a place where there's nothing but trouble, nothing but sorrow, nothing but the effects of sin, nothing but death, continual death and suffering forever and ever and ever. You're an eternal being who was created for eternal life. You will spend an eternal life somewhere, heaven or hell, and God gives you the ability to choose. He will honor your choice. If you reject Jesus as the Savior who died on the cross to pay for the sins of mankind for anyone who will believe, God so loved the world, you, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's God's promise to us. That's what Jesus did. And three days later, he rose again. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He, he ever lives to make intercession for us. That means he's praying for you. He's praying for me. Don't resist him. Stop resisting him. It's the end of 2017. It's been enough. Embrace him. Ask him to be yours. Believe and follow. That's what Jesus asked us to do. Believe and follow. And then we're his. We get his Holy Spirit in our heart. We get a clean slate with God in heaven for every sin we've ever committed and ever will commit. Why would you turn it down? <clears throat> My husband's mother used to beg him when he was backslidden. What's so wonderful about the world and all the sin that you're involved in that makes you reject Jesus? Son, what's so wonderful in the world that you want to reject the Savior? Why reject the goodness for all the garbage, the sorrow and the shame? The shame. You don't have to have it anymore. Okay. After you transfer ownership have that necessary, you have that necessary uh, meeting with God and you get that new pers perspective that you're a steward now, not the owner. You're a steward. These people you live with, you, they're not yours to keep. The Lord made them and he can take them away when he's ready. Our pets too. They belong to him. They go home when he's ready. Uh, you've moved from perceived owner to actual steward because you're an actual steward and you're only a perceived owner. Uh, give imaginatively. That's what Pastor Lutzer said. Give imaginatively. Seek ways to surprise someone in need with a generous gift or provision. Pray and ask God for opportunities to bless someone unexpectedly. That's what I have to share with you today. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving, Americans. I know there's so many brothers and sisters who are watching who are not Americans. Uh, I learned recently that Thanksgiving was a time when the president of our country during the Civil War set aside a day of the year for us to thank God for the abundant provision of our crops um, during a time of war. When we were in a civil war with ourselves, America, North and South, were fighting with each other. Uh, President Abraham Lincoln set aside a day, he called it Thanksgiving Day, for all Americans to thank God for the abundant provision that our crops were still coming in. Even though we're in war, everything is still, we're still blessed abundantly. You are blessed abundantly and you know it. Have a Thanksgiving wherever you are. God bless you in Jesus' name.